Hi and welcome to Manned Up Conversations where we connect with evolving men to discuss issues around masculinity and manhood and also provide tools to help us be better for our society. It's very sad, the xenophobia thing, man. And mm. I take it I take it quite personally because I tell my wife all the time, it's a, it's a, it's a harsh word and it's a word that she doesn't like to hear me say, but mm. I'm also a McQuitty-Quitty. Oh, man. I'm also a McQuitty-Quitty. Well, we and don't look at Americans that's my and point. Italians in them like that. That's right? my point. Oof. That's my point. I mean, now we're going back to a whole apartheid sort of uh, uh, concept of honorary mm. white. Mm. So are you saying that I'm an honorary black or an honorary white or an honorary Chinese? I am Warrior Rick. Man. Right. I am born of two Panamanian parents. Mm. I am an Afro Latino and then evolved into this South African American person. Mm. Xenophobia is cutting us off at our legs Man. and it is not in, it's not allowing us to evolve as a people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. This is it. Uh, I'm here with my brother, man. Ricardo, a.k.a. Warrior Rick. Man, I love this brother over here because, you know, I think this is a probably second or third conversation. And the first time I called you up, man, you just like spark so much energy into my day, you know. Um, I think we connected about two weeks ago, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing that you greeted me with, man, was you were blessed and highly favored. <laughs> and you reminded me of the importance of greetings, right? Because yeah. you always greet each other. It's like, yeah, man, how are you doing? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm all good. And it just we keep it moving like that, you know. So let's get into that, bro. Um, first, actually, welcome. Thank you. Thanks so much, man. Um, Manned up conversations. I have a feeling uh, I know what's coming, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Yes, so that's sir. also good. I love pleasant surprises around around the corner. So let's go. Yeah, man. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some stuff that I always prep, but you know, I'm gonna come off you know a little bit sideways here and there. Good. So good. let's keep it moving like that, man. Keep it real. But yo, what's the importance of greeting to you, man, Rick? Um, and why 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 such a a warm, empowering greeting, man? What what does that mean to you? Well, I think it's because we all face challenges. We all are, you know, coming up short in terms of the way we feel or the way we see things. But the reality is, is that no one can steal your joy. So what you have within you is something that needs to come out. And, and I do it to remind myself. It's not just for the person I'm speaking to. Mm. That self-love, you know, comes from me just saying I'm blessed and highly favored. So even if the person that I'm speaking to or my day, even the demons that are in my head mm. are, are trying to trip me up, mm. I start with mm. I am blessed and highly favored. And throughout the day, every time I greet someone, every time I have a, a moment, um, I can remind myself of my state of being. Man. And you obviously include the Lord in that, man, yeah, because that's, yeah. that's that's who we serve, right? That's right. I mean, that's right. you know, we got a few who don't, and that's yeah. okay. You know, you're entitled to choose what you wanna. That's but my man, choice. Is now you they got their choice. Exactly. I got my my. That's my choice. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. man. And 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 uh, can uh, can we call you someone who's religious? You know, are you religious? Are you spiritual? I see. You know, that's always you know something. So religion, I, I treat religion as the finite. So mm. the finite is there to help you align to the infinite. Mm -hmm. So the infinite to me is more important. Mm -hmm. So energy and spirit is the same thing. Scientists call it energy. Mm -hmm. um, spiritual folks call it spirit, or mm -hmm. even religious people will say spirit. Mm. So for me, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to, uh, to share the fact that I'm on fire for Christ, Man. that I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. Mm. I believe that um, he was one of the best examples uh, to us. And I think that's why God, you know, uh, made it to be that yeah. he would, you know, give his son to us mm. and to even have him sacrificed for, for us. Yeah. And I think that is the ultimate example and the ultimate goal um, is to be more Christ-like. Um, but as you said, I mean, there is, there are so many different people in the world. There's so many different ways of being and so many ways to get to, um, happiness and prosperity and, and to really find that inner joy. Mm. Uh, for me, that's been, that's been my journey and that's how I have, uh, fallen in and out of grace and learned, especially as a grown man, that grace is sufficient, that if I have the grace, um, I can do anything. Mm. And, and, and I, that's my superpower. Man. I love that, man. Because, you know, we often talk about, um, in case you haven't picked it up, I mean, you can pick up the American accent right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm South African-American. Uh -huh, Is there uh -huh. no, no South African coming through at all? Man, we, well, hey, I, we'll get a bit into that. We'll get a bit into that. I know you threw some Twana words at, at some yeah, folks when you were walking Well, it's Sutu. Here, My man. wife is a Masutu, so I can... I, Kibo is a Sutu. Okay, okay, yeah, there, we I, there we I, go. I, I, I don't say I kind of, should have, would have. 
Kabua Susutu. Yes, sir. Kabua. Come, come on, man. <laughs> you got to learn, man. We need to get some white people on that too, right? I love it. True <laughs> that. True that. <laughs> but, man, Warrior Rick, my brother, you know, mm. you moved from um, the States and you ended yeah. up here in SA, man. I mean, you know, a lot of people know you for, for your active um, voice on social media, um, at, 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 at athletic events, and all of the stuff. You always, wherever I see you, man, you're like, you know, larger than life almost. You know, you always, or not even almost, you're always larger than life, bro. You're always, you know, screaming from like the piss of your voice. Like, you can hear there's like so much power, rawness right. in this guy, but you're using that to impact people. And I love that, you know. But I want to ask, man, like, why South Africa specifically? Um, yeah. I was modeling, bro. I was, oh, wow. yeah, okay. I was modeling in okay. Europe uh, in 1993 in an agency from South Africa, you know, was in Italy. We mm. went into the, Agency, it was called Ugly People. Agency oh, wow. was called Ugly People, right? <laughs> and uh, well, fine brother modeling for ugly people. Come on. <laughs> but it get, hey, it gets casting directors yeah, and, and yeah. magazines thinking, ugly people, let's have a look at that. Okay. okay. And so yeah, they they said uh, that I would do well in South Africa. I had hmm. studied South Africa at Stanford, at Stanford University. I took oh, courses wow. um on South Africa. I was very curious mm. about race relations, mm. about history. Uh, about Zulus, about Boers. I was just the anglo Boer War, all those things um, I had studied. And, and obviously in those recent uh, times of early 90s was, mm. you know, Chris Hani and uh, and Nelson Mandela coming out of prison. So I was just, I was very curious. Mm. And so I said, yeah, I'll take on the opportunity. I knew it was risky. I knew that there would be uh, some challenges. Things were still blowing up. Mm -hmm. It was still Jan Smuts Airport. Mm -hmm. It wasn't O.R. Tambo. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there was still, you know, a lot of issues, bomb threats, uh, uh, there was still some sabotage going on, so I was uh, aware. Yeah. But I, but I said this would be a good time for me to um, not increase my my uh, to improve my career as a model. But mm. I think it was more about the adventure mm. of learning more about Africa, learning more about who I am in Africa, learning wow. more about my identity uh, as an African American. Mm. And it was uh, yeah, it was the best thing I could have ever done. Man, and I mean, the culture's kind of embraced you, man, because whenever I see you with like hundreds of people, man, yeah, right? And yeah. it's like all sexes, all ages, different. <laughs> so you're experiencing Ubuntu that we talk about, big man. Time, big and, time, big time. And, and how is that, that the Ubuntu spirit? Because, man, we walked in here. Oh, like, bro. I've met people that I didn't even meet before, and I've been here for like, I'm here every other day. Right? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, here's, here's someone from outside. I didn't even call you an outsider because you've been here for right. 23 plus, right? Right, right? So here's someone who's maybe not born here, but who's, you know, really living the values of Ubuntu. So how are you experiencing all of that? Well, I mean, you know, for me, once I got wind of what Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Gabantu is... Oh. I recognize that that is fundamental to our humanity. Mm. Um, and where we lost the plot mm. is when we started thinking more like Western philosophers like Descartes, mm. who said, Rene Descartes said that, you know, I think, therefore I am. So that mm. makes me human. Mm. So, But that's a, a very solitary, individualistic, even narcissistic way to look at things. Mm. If you think that you are human because you stand alone, well, not only is it easy for you to fall, you can even get your own house, your own children, your own little corner in space. But how do you get your coffee? How do you trade? How do you engage? How do you see the world? You can't see the world if you just think, therefore, you are, because mm. then your thoughts aren't necessarily the correct thoughts. So for me, that's where I started recognizing Mbutu was, mm. was at a crossroads, was actually at 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 odds mm. with this Western philosophy of I think, therefore I am. Mm. So it is an African way of being that dates back mm. probably to the beginning of time, probably yeah. with the the Koi and the San. And and it really means that, you know, when you see a stranger, mm. that it is really up to you to recognize that you are because of that person. Yes, that you, the decision you make to give or not to give mm. is is at that that point, mm. that moment in time mm. where you could offer a cup of coffee or water or even a, a greeting, that's your opportunity to demonstrate Ubuntu. And when you demonstrate Ubuntu, now bringing it into the Christian uh, side of things, uh -huh. it is in giving that you receive. Mm. So mm. that's interesting. Mm. So I'm, I don't get by sitting back and thinking, therefore I am. Sure. I receive goodness and love and challenges and opportunities by giving. Mm. So mm. that law of the universe, giving 
is how you receive ties beautifully into Ubuntu. And I think that's in a lot in, in large part where we've lost the plot and where I continue to try in my work and yeah. in my life and yeah. with my family and with my wife mm. to to give in order to receive, blessed to be a blessing, mm. and know that I am because we are. Man. But I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, we talk about it, right? Me and, me and my homies talk about, yeah, Ubuntu, this, that, and the next. But, you know, our country then went through, you know, the, the, the horrible phase of our apartheid and all of that. And we know that pretty well, right? We're all familiar with that. But we had to come into now a place of, well, it's time for us to get now. So now that turned into, hey, man, I can't give to you because I need to get for me and my family. We see that with our politicians. We see it with literally everyone. I mean, in the cops in the streets who are supposed to give you a ticket, it's like, well, let me not even serve the law. I was going to take for myself, right? right? right. So, so how, are you, how are you seeing, like, um, even our brotherhood, man? We, yeah. we don't even greet each other the same, right? Mm. Because, it's like, mostly with guys, like, this mean uh, mugging that goes on now, you know, even a handshake is not even tight. It's just like a little slap and yeah. you move on. Yeah. You know, I greeted you with a hug, bro, and you embraced. We even said a bunch of words still holding each other, mm. right? Mm. So, like, that, that I felt this, this wound to connection. If I, right like, on, I'm, I keep on going back to that word. Yeah. But, like, how, how do you think, you know, we can even try to change that and go back to those times? Is, is it even possible to do that right now? It, it, you know, what, the question you're asking, what I'm hearing is, is, like, what happened? Yeah, but yeah. didn't we learn from the past? Um, I, I can remember hearing that word. We used to say apartheid, mm. apartheid, mm. but it's apartheid. Mm. It's a separation. It's COVID. Mm. It's you can't connect with your brother. You can't integrate. You can't be interdependent. Mm. The independence is important. It's important for us to be pro-black and pro-Christian and pro-atheist and mm -hmm. pro-whatever. You're supposed to celebrate who you are and that's mm. your authenticity. Mm. So be pro about it. But in order to learn your pro and to learn mm. more about how you can change your pro and evolve and you can change your mind is you're going to have to integrate for interdependence, yes, which is Ubuntu. So mm. what did we learn or what we didn't learn is that the separation of I think therefore I am, mm. the separation of I got mine you get yours, mm. is what we're living today. You see, this is not our turn. Mm. That's, the, that's the problem. And I'm, and I'm about words. So you'll, you'll hear me using words that I think are, are, the, are the catalyst for change. Mm -hmm. The word shouldn't be, it's my turn. Mm. The word should be, it's my opportunity. Oof. And what I do with that opportunity mm. is what determines my fate and the fate of my family, my community, and the world. Mm. Man, I love it, man. It's 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 it's, it's my opportunity, not yeah, my yeah. turn, man. That's right. And you That's seeing right. you seeing more. I mean, I'm seeing problems, right? But do you see? You know, when they say, right? I don't see problems, but I see opportunities. Do yeah. you, do you see an opportunity for us to do that though? Absolutely. These conversations. And you and you've said it right. But just yeah. we, just let's go back to problem. So problem issue is the negative, right? Mm. Load shedding, mm. corruption. Mm. Those are problems. Rather look at it as a challenge. So don't be living in oblivion, mm. right? I think there's some people who probably look at me and say, he's just so positive mm. all the time, mm. but I got challenges. Mm. So my challenge, which we share, is low shedding. Mm. My challenge that we share is, is a woman who doesn't understand me from time sure. to time. My challenge that you don't have currently, which mm. you may have, mm. God willing, is children. Mm. Those are challenges. Mm. It's not always hunky-dory, but it is in the challenge that I find opportunity and you can hear an opportunity. Come yeah. on. You can hear an opportunity mm. that that is where success lies. Mm. Success doesn't lie in the mm. problem and success definitely doesn't lie in sitting around doing nothing. Mm -hmm. You've got to attack the problem. You've got to face the challenge. You've got to get to the start line mm. in order to mm. find your opportunity. Mm. Welcome the challenge. Mm. Then once you get to the opportunity, then you can have a conversation. You mm. can say, I tried it and I didn't like it. You can say that I, I, I had the conversation, but I'm still learning. I got to do some homework on that. Yes, sir. You even said you want to go back to some of the episodes on manned up conversation. And it may be some things that you can pull out of there, some legacy issues and, yes, and some things yes, that are, 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 are for future. Mm. And, you, and you start working with it. That's the beautiful thing of conversation. Mm. So... For me, where we are now is mm. we're at an opportunity to say, what have we gotten right 
And what have we gotten wrong? I just heard now um, uh, Vusi Tembaquayo mm. saying that there were some things that we got right during apartheid. Uh-huh. There is nothing right about apartheid at all. Yeah. But there are some things during that era, of course. That worked. That, yeah, that sure. may have worked. Yeah. And it, it could be because of infrastructure. It could have been maybe even the type of conversations we had. Mm. When I arrived here mm. in 1994 mm. and I was hanging out in Rosebank and hanging out in Yeovil, having a lovely time and, mm. and, and really enjoying uh, a lot of things that I enjoyed in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yes, sir. Smoking a joint, mm-hmm. drinking some beer, hanging out with folks, having a great time. right? Yeah. And also talking about the, the air in our ways mm-hmm. in terms of a society and mm-hmm. talking about the future and opportunity. And we got to a, a point where they said, well, Rick, you can't be in this conversation. I oh, said, man. but because oh, there's professors, man. there's teachers, there's there's different types of people in the room. And I'm thinking, yes, well, but I'm also of that ilk. I mean, I got a Stanford degree. I mm. mean, can I be in here? They said, no, you might be CIA. Oh, wow. We need to get back oh, to so that point. Brought in from of the course. States to come in. Oh, you man. see, so I, they, maybe oh, they thought man. I was infiltrating. Maybe Because oh, remember, in, those, in that era mm-hmm. of the late 90s mm-hmm. and, even, and even before, but in that transitionary period, yes, there were lots of informants. Mm. We got to get back to that stage where we need to start discerning truth. Mm. So I wasn't mad at him. I was disappointed at the time because yes, I was sir. so eager to learn and be part of it. Mm. But we need to get to the point where we start, we start discerning truth. You got to be mindful of who you speak to. Mm. You got to be mindful of who you listen to. Mm. And you sure as heck got to be mindful of who you hang out with. Mm. Because that is where we're making the mistakes. If someone has got their hand in the cookie jar, mm-hmm. run away. Mm. Don't even try to coach them or what. Get out of there. Mm. Because there are too many hands in the cookie jar. I'm talking about corruption now. Mm. There are too many hands in there that you can even be infiltrated. Say no thank you and move on and get out of there. Man. We've got to be mindful. If you want to take advantage of the opportunity mm. as you see these challenges, be careful. Mm. Be mindful. And call a spade a shovel. If mm. you see that there's, a, there's an issue, run away from it and mm. create Man. your own space to have a podcast, create your own space to, to be where people are that, that, that you're around that love you mm. so that you can have these like-hearted warriors on a mission to, to change the world. Man.